Tuesday, right? Hello, everyone. It's Wednesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the latest with me. Vivo Akasha Zibi. Are you on top of you? Did you go and plant things? I mean, take two. Yeah, yes, you can't do it. I didn't, Ima. I'm fine and super excited. So it's my niece's first birthday. Ah. The one that came right after my dad passed. Oh. Wow. Um, in the cola. I don't remember how you burn it. Ah. You might be more when you're around. <laughs> We call her Nicola in uh, Mesa and today is her first birthday. Yeah. I've seen her pictures. They're working at nine months. And oh, just, wow. Beautiful pictures, but yeah. I'm not sharing. Yes. <laughs> I'm so excited. Her mom is also in November. Um, person, so you should have started this very, very things. But this is my family. Yeah, no, it's family. I mean, it, you have it was her when her sister's birthday. And she's she's she has plenty. But just the vex. But this is my niece, first, as in my elder sister's daughter. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. How are you doing? This, How this, are you? This confirms I'm fine. I'm rested. You know, I took right. the children off. And so I'm, oh, feeling, yeah. I'm experiencing honeymoon again. Oh, that, so you wait, 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 I spoke to Gufra this morning. She's from Grandma's house. She's from Grandma's oh, house. Oh, I can imagine that. sister's house. My mom is there too. And my, her dad is just pampering me, so I'm enjoying it. Oh, you look good, good for you. you. It's really good for you. Go back and sleep. Necessary Stop watching this trauma. Because <laughs> I felt traumatized watching the building for yeah, the rescue. Yeah, yeah. And I had to switch off all the TV and say, yeah. sleep. Close right. your eyes and I actually rest. How are you I'm good, so... Um, you nice and bright today. Yes. We glory to God. Um, Excellent leadership conference is tomorrow and next tomorrow. That's a day start program, ALC. Oh. But this time it is virtual. Last year we didn't even do any. So I'm excited that we're going to back at that. I will be serving in my capacity presenting. Um, the children will not let me rest. I'd already, this is midterm break. So I'd be looking for activities to engage them. We went to watch a movie yesterday. We went to church for rehearsals together yesterday. Wow. And today, this is going to take them off my hand for... Three two. boys. Yeah. Hey. So add to my one boy that is 500. So, <laughs> and I will be fine. So, so the, our church in church, don't fall. That, it's not that you should not run because we cannot prevent them from yeah. running. Don't fall. Guess what? The injury that you witnessed got opened again yesterday. Oh, my um, we So how is your pastor? Boys. Is he back? For the, no, 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 no. It's a virtual it's conference. Everything is virtual. So we nice. can join. It's leadership, yeah. authentic leadership. And at this, this time in Nigeria, we need to raise more authentic people that understand their, um, the reason why they are at that position. And mm. the okay. theme for ELC is authentic leadership. So join online. It's free. How are you doing, BC? I'm doing amazing. I love your neck piece. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yesterday I went uh, shopping at the uh, Oba Market, so I had to get ready for my visitors <laughs> that will be coming to scatter the house. You know my children, no, it's bread it's though. It's bread, I know, I know. <laughs> so um, I got to the market yesterday and the prices of things. Um, oh gosh, terrible. The, the, the oil I used to buy for 6,500, I got it for over 8,000 yeah. naira. The tomato, everything had gone up. In fact, the woman had to advise, Madam, do your Christmas shopping now. Because if you come back next week, you don't know what you're going to make. No, the, the team. Yes, the paste. paste, yeah, the mm. paste. It's and it was, the meat, everything has just, the prices are just going up. And I'm, I'm so worried because mm. I really do not know. Uh, yesterday, my uh, driver had to check on the gas price. is 8,000 plus. We don't know how it's going to get before December. It's really painful. So I did what I could do, Leo. Um, I think I have to buy a tape rule now to be measuring <laughs> yam and measuring food in my house because this is no longer the governor's no, palace. So don't just eat anyhow. I call it so. I have to. I call it hotel Afalabi Brown. I'm telling you. Also, they ask me, what is your Yeah, which one do you want? They're just going to take it back. In this house, you don't understand. Oh, now I have to stop. But you know, something happened to me today. I think I should share. Let me see if I have a few seconds to share. It was yesterday. Uh, and it was this morning, I wanted to, I needed, we don't, we don't have it highlighting like almost a week. So my help tried to help me boil water. So she was busy and I said, where's the water? It was on the gas cooker. So I went there and unfortunately I tried to, I realized that she didn't, the fire, there was no fire. So I now lit up another, another part, part of the gas cooker. Not realizing that there was gas already. In the leak. Oh my oh. God. She opened. Windows closed. Oh. I was, I, I mean like, I already lit the fire, and I then realized what's going on here. I was just lucky. I mean, when I say lucky, hmm. like I was lucky that the gas, because the way the windows were lit, what happened was that the gas had already finished. Mm. Oh, mm. Grace. Grace. Oh, God. So I now saw that the gas was on, and I, I could smell a little bit, but it wasn't so much. Because mm. the it had leaked out. Leaked out. Mm. So we have to be very careful. Before you turn on gas, 
look Wait, check. Just look. Oh. check. I mean, I had to slap my face like, well, God don't we'll save this. Yeah, because if it was on, it would have it been a different on, story. Because I already, I already turned on the, the lighter. Hmm. So please be careful. Very, very, very always check for you. Emba, Emba will not Emba us. The spirit of Emba will not Emba us. Let's go on a break. When we return, we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Starting with the punch. APC convention date shaky. Party battles crisis in 13 states. Picture again of the rescue operations that's ongoing in Ikoyi. Suspected insane woman throws two children into well. Bodies are missing. Amoteko arrests herbalist, accomplice her with coffin, posting mm. dismembered corpse. Obi Kubana spends second day with EFCC passport seized. Asu seeks prayers as government kidnapped two uni Abuja professors and family members. NNPC admits hitches at depots, dismisses price hike rumor. And it could build in Lagos to spend GM, death toll rises to 20, and families protest. Okay, which story are we taking? The punch had reported that uh, the price of petrol has increased from 148 naira per liter to 153 naira per liter, which of course will translate to increase in prices. And that they had also reported scarcity or queues in Abuja, in Nasarawa, and one other state up north. But the GM, Group GM, the NPC, Mene Kiari, was speaking at, at um, the, an energy correspondence conference that, no, we don't have any, this speculation of false scarcity and prior foreign increase should not bother Nigerians because we have over 1.7 billion liters of petrol already in stock and we're expecting 2.3 billion liters coming in. So there's, there's nothing to fear for the month of November and December. Yeah. But you know, when an NPC speaks, that we ah. should not worry. It's where we should let's be. be <laughs> let's be careful. According to Nima. Yes, so, yeah. so, <laughs> we should open right. our eyes. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, Amateko got a tip off in Ogun State mm -hmm. that um, there was somebody who was carrying a casket into a building and so they you know, rushed into the building and um, it was the house of one Dari Banjo who is a herbalist. So when they got in there, the stench coming out from the casket, they had to ask mm. to open this casket. By the time they opened the casket, they realized that they were dismembered oh the bodies God. of a particular person inside. And uh, they had to pick up the ritualist. It was a ritualist, the herbalist, and the two people who brought in the casket. They are under investigations right now. They discovered that they wanted to use that dead body for um, morning ritual. But see... Yes, like, they can. You know, Oluwo, 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 Oluwo is always talking about this thing. We always kind of always ignore, but he's been talking a lot about the amount of people that, that get killed for mm, ritual, money rituals, for, for, for rituals, money rituals. And it's something we have to really focus on because according to him, thousands are killed almost on a daily, daily basis on this matter. Yeah. So we need to really find a way to investigate further and then take up this matter. Um, Obi okay. Kubana has been, Obi Kubana has been detained. Um, he spent his second... I think they released him already. No, 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 no. Okay. That, yeah, they, mm. But, but well, he said the, he's still there. They said he's still being detained. He's just been asked questions. He said he's satisfactorily answering all the questions. This is in relation to money laundry and um, tax, tax fraud. Um, he was found. They also said there were some illegal, according to the statement, he said the, he's answering questions relating to his involvement in various illegal deals. More details haven't been revealed, just that he's involved in an investigation and he's been detained while the questions have been asked. All over social media is we stand with him, we support mm. him, don't bring a big man down, a good man down. All of that is going on. I'm wondering, okay. Igbo leaders are saying that yeah. the arrest of Obi is another version of Buhari's uh, anti Igbo policies. Mm. And I think they can now confirm that any Igbo man who is successful in business or in philanthropies will be arrested. I think, and, I think the, um, the EFCC should even calm down in sharing the stories. Let them have something to, so that tangible, when you come concrete. out tangible, when you come here, so you don't mess up. You know what happens? Media trials. With media trials. That's why, how I felt they that. should calm down. Yeah. You know, I had felt that the, the extravagance during the burial should have been investigated. It is done everywhere in the world where no more people are. And nobody calls it. But he wasn't the one that spent it. But no, no. But that wasn't investigated. Nobody was investigated. And now we have picked him. Nigerian style is that we shout in and they don't have a substantive. They don't have a substantive. The, uh, President's son's wedding case. too. There was extravagant. Well, well. I talked about that also. So no substantive uh, mm. a case, mm. but you have right. already shouted in the media. 
So uh, I think we need to move on mm -hmm. to another paper. The nation, victims, relatives, besieged, collapse, Lagos building sites. We'll talk about that as a hot topic later. Buhari seeks release of $100 billion climate change fund. Fear of another head as attack grips Ibarapa. Manhunt begins for abductors of six at Uni Abuja. Mm -hmm. Police arrest suspects in siege to Adelis home and $8.99 billion investment inflow tracked in Q3. Okay. Um, we have a human interest story yes, please, go in ahead. front there. So a middle-aged woman who returned from, this happened in um, Oshun State, capital, uh, Oshobo, who returned from Oman, I don't know where Oman is, took her two daughters, one, uh, Darasimi, eight years old, and Mimi Sire, five years old, took them to um, an area in the city and threw them into the well one after the other. So the police have picked her up. They're asking her questions. They are suspecting mm. that she's not well. And they are trying to rescue the two children who have been thrown into the well. I hope they rescue them. I hope mm. they are still, they, they survive, yeah, because it's taking a long time. And as at the time of this report, they have not been rescued yet. Mm. So okay. the investment story about its, its um, $0.99 billion investment inflow was tracked just in quarter three um, this year. And all your Rivers and Lagos accounted for 87% of the total investment. This is information coming from the Nigeria Investment Promotion Commission. Um, also, part of that story was the fact that generally between 2017 and 2021, we haven't gotten as much cash flow that had been pledged. So a total of money pledged, less money redeemed. Issues are beyond the Nigeria Investment Promotion Commission, saying that a lot of the challenges, insecurity, currency fluctuation is affecting their own job. That mm. They are getting people that are willing to invest. But the other agencies need to do their work to encourage investors to trust the system to put their money in. But we're happy about this one that's coming. Let us judiciously spend the money as we have said we are going to. Um, the president, of course, went for the climate change conference. I have to pause you for a second, Nima, because I'm just told that we have a bit of an emergency. We have uh, Fari Louis Ibrahim, coordinator, Nema Lagos Territorial Office, on the phone. He wants to give us an urgent information. Good morning, sir. Are you there? I'm well. Good morning, sir. How are you? Fine. I'm yes, I'm told you have an emergency. What's going on? Yes, uh, we, we, we still discussed a lot of a massive gas leakage at the... Uh, Around Kofuta village. Massive gas. So, uh, oh. Ani for Oshi. Okay. Uh, I will know what we do with adoption of Akra. So, our appeal is people should cooperate with us. They should not open shop. They should move far away from that area. And most importantly, they should not operate anything that can ignite fire. Vehicles, motorcycles, or other riders should move away. Those ones can ignite fire. Already we have shut down supply. The Nigerian gas company has shut down supply. Fire, uh, state fire service, all of them, and all security agencies are on ground. Right. So, prevent, so we need the cooperation of the negotiations. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very you much know. for that. So just to reiterate what, what he just said, we have a massive gas leakage in the computer village area mm. around Awolo Way, Oba Akran, and um, Anifo Oishu. So if you're in that area, please evacuate. Leave with that. Don't turn on anything that has to do with um, fire, anything that's combustible. Uh, please leave that area. If you have family and friends in that area, kindly send a message right away to please leave the area. The government is on top of it because they've already turned off the, the source. But obviously, there's still gas in the air. So please leave that area as soon as you can. We'll continue to remind our viewers on this towards the end of the show. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue with the review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. What's the difference between regular data and MTN data? I'll show you. With regular data, you get this. But with MTN data, you get moved right into the action like this. And this. And this...
and this. With MTN data, you don't just get more, you experience more. Need loads of data to live your dream? Turn it up on MTN, the reliable data network. Looking fresh for your dates? Get even fresher with Close Up. New Close Up Triple Fresh Formula. It cleans deeply, fights 99% of bacteria, and cools intensely. Keeping you protected and fresh. Protected and fresh. Protected and fresh. Let's take a picture. Protected and fresh. Still fresh, still protected. Feeling cool and protected. All day confidence to get close. Oh, yeah, thank you. Close up short. Close. New close up triple fresh formula. There are moments in life when you're just so scared and you feel like just giving up. Oh, but I know milk is saying. We know that you can do it Believe in yourself and then go for it Go for it Nourish mental That is your dino milk Oh yes, dino milk Dino milk Drink up your dino milk Dino milk Nivea black and white deodorant Protects me and my favorite outfit That's why I feel confident and free with 5-in-1 anti-formula, I stay fresh and protected for 48 hours. And my clothes stay stain-free. Nivea Black and White Anti-Stain Deodorant. Try it! Nivea's 5-in-1 anti-action formula and 48-hour protection is also available for men. A new life is here with Enterprise Life Assurance. Our decades of experience in the West African markets will help you achieve your dreams with peace of mind. Visit www.myenterprisegroup.io forward slash ng or call 0700 Enterprise to know more. Enterprise Life, your advantage. <laughs> Yes, but how? Just one question for you. How do you keep your toilet clean? I use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains. I have been using it for years. Oh, mother, the regular detergents and bleach are used for washing clothes. To disinfect your toilet properly, you need Hapik 10X. It is specially made for germs and stains remover. Hapik sticker formula settles on stains and gives 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergent and bleach. Wow! Political power is not the ability to be a lord over the other person. It is the authority given to help point a people in the right direction. If the peace and progress of Anambra State is your desire, then you should resist every temptation to spread fake news, steal ballot boxes, and destroy lives and properties in the forthcoming gubernatorial elections. Anambra State is not just a geographical location, it is the people in it and their well-being. This message is brought to you from the Centre for Democracy and Development, CDD, with support from the UK government. Thanks for staying with us. So before the break, we're speaking with Mr. Fari Louis Ibrahim, the coordinator. Nema Lagos Territorial Office was telling us that there is a massive um, gas leakage in the Oba Akran, uh, Anifooshi, Awulawi area, computer village area, that people in that region should please evacuate and refrain from um, turning on anything inflammable to cause, to, not to cause any disaster in that area. Please um, spread the news so that people know in that area to move out. Okay, moving on now to another story. Nation, yes, Nima, you had a story. Go ahead, please. Buhari is speaking at the, of course, the climate change conference that he's attending, talked, try, um, pleaded with developed nations to fulfill their pledge of $100 billion annually to developing nations to help them, of course, uh, conform with the greenhouse gas emission eradication target. He also made the case for a gas-based energy transition in Nigeria, and he requested that international partners finance projects using 
transitional fuels such as gas in Nigeria. Of course, we know that the reason we are paying through our nose now for gas here is because of infrastructure deficit. Most people are saying we don't have infrastructure to help hold or transmit gas that we have in abundance here. And so we are importing. But if we had funds like this, hopefully when they are utilized, would be able to cover that deficit of infrastructure. Okay, moving on quickly now to Daily Sun. Bandits' invasion of Uni Abuja provokes fierce tension in F um, FCT. Death toll in 21-story building Lagos hits 20. Government attack Adoekiti, resident of Yoruba self-determination leader. Nigeria owed China $3 billion as at last year, says World Bank. Energy transition banks shown oil and gas project funding. Anambra Guba, candidates plea for Kano's release, pledge peaceful conduct, urge IBOB not to disrupt, disrupt elections. Okay, BC. Yes, I have uh, the major headlines. So, uh, government at the early hours of yesterday attacked the staff quarters of the University of Abuja, Uni Abuja, and uh, kidnapped six persons, including two professors and four others. Their names were mentioned here Professor Oban Samalam and his son, Professor Oboskolo, his son and daughter, and Dr. Tobins. And they said it happened around 1 o'clock. Uh, they, they came in through the windows and um, they took about two hours to... Kept, they kept shooting sporadically into the air for two hours. The operation was going on and they succeeded in abducting six persons. So uh, the ASU uh, president of the school has, you know, spoken out and he's saying he's calling for prayers. Uh, the FCT um, police command also said they've deployed uh, officials to secure that area. A PDP condemned it, saying that uh, this is even about 16 kilometers away from the presidential villa, and yet they are not able to be protected. So everybody's running helter-skelter right now in the FCT. But uh, the police is saying that um, they have a lot of people you know, securing their different campuses, and they are still going to find out uh, where the bandits are who have kidnapped these people. This so they have not gotten any news where they are or any. And yeah. any amount to mm. be paid to them. There's an, there's an account. Ah, that is too close. Too close. Yes, too now, and, close. The, and the citadel, citadel of learning no longer safe. I have a mm. niece there. I'm not finding it when I called her yesterday to leave campus. She said they're stopping them from even moving or leaving campus. So I think it is better for us to be able to carry our child out. And I guess they don't want the panic of that. Yeah. Yes. 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 In those days when Lasso was so tense like this yeah. and this kind of, we're allowed to leave immediately. You're safer at home with your family then. Mm. But one of the accounts of the, one of the um, victim's son was that the way they even took the father, mm. almost naked, he, he had gone to hide in the ceiling and had to come out. And in his boxers, he was uh, abducted like that. I have the story of the Anamba Guba. So all parties... From all candidates from all platforms on parties in the Anambra elections signed a piece um, um, a statement, a joint statement, and they also asked that the IPOB leader Nambikanu be released to the Southeast, Southeast Council of Traditional Rulers and Representatives of Igbo, Archbishops and Bishops, as part of efforts to ensure an each free elections in Anambra. In the same vein, they are asking that they demilitarize the Southeast and stem heightened tension amongst people, you know, and that this would reduce some form of bloodletting and stem all, all agitations within. They're also asking uh, INEC to maintain for the duration of the election and beyond peace so that their supporters can come out and vote and a lot of other issues that they asked for that, you know, would ensure that they have an each free elections in mm. the Southeast. They added some other requests that about 5,000 Igbo youths who have been arrested on the basis of IPOP should be released. They are also talking about how the IPOP leader should be released. They are appealing to IPOP not to disrupt anything. They, I think they, they had given them that's from November 4th. If um, their leader is not released, they are going to have that seat at home, which would even affect yeah. the elections. They are asking them to stay on it. Okay, moving on quickly to the Nigerian Tribune. Justice Odele's house invasion, impunity taken too far, says Supreme Court. Mm. My father abducted almost naked, mm. I think that's what she said, said. Mm. came down from ceiling following intense... Gunshot says victim's son. Mm. Special report how poor blood donation culture endangers lives of pregnant women and other patients. How 14,423 Boko Haram members surrendered, says federal government. And NBC at least fares over fuel scarcity. The new play to assembly speaker threatens to arrest impeached speaker. And picture here again of the 21-story building collapse. Mm -hmm. Death toll hits 19, nine brought out alive. Okay, which story are we taking? So, Justice Odile's house um, invasion. Mm. The Supreme Court, the Chief Justice, 
and the spokesperson, the, the director of press and information, Dr. Festus Akonde, have you know voiced the the reserves of the Supreme Court in this attack. They say they call it, consider it impunity at the highest order, mm -hmm. also calling on the AG to have this investigated. The IGP says that some suspects have been arrested in relation to this, and this, the, the style and manner of that invasion is presently being investigated also. Mm -hmm. And um, in the statement of one of them, he said it, we are deeply saddened and taken aback by this uncivilized, shameful show of primitive force on an innocent judicial officer that has so far spent several years of her productive life serving the country she calls her own. The, in the same way, the chief justice said, we will no longer be a whipping boy mm. to the three arms of government. So that every time, we know we had a gangster invasion of yeah. justice's uh, uh, residents in the past. And this cannot be the style of, you know, investigation of any right. justice in the country anymore. It should be right. followed due process. All right, so there's a special report that caught my attention concerning... Um, Blood donation, which I know that you're very quite interested in. So, Professor Suleiman Akamu is a consultant hem hem um, hematologist at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. Was saying that about 40 percent of the blood required are for women, pregnant women, mm. and he's saying that we can actually meet our needs if if um, five percent of Nigerians voluntarily donate. So, all we need is five percent of Nigerians to donate mm -hmm. at least uh, as often as you can, mm. and if we can do that, we'll be able to get help mothers who are in need, especially those are the ones that actually need the most. I said about 25 to 30% also for the sickle cell disease management. So 40% for pregnant women, 20 to 30% for sickle cells and then others. Mm. So it's important that we please try to donate blood as, as much as we can. I know I've donated and I think I am after every three months I believe mm. and I died and I will make it a culture to urge to donate. Based on your history of donating, it could be more than three months. As often if as you have enough, enough blood, blood. Yeah, it could be your, it could make be your birthday gift. <laughs> That's the one now. now. Yeah. I'm telling you, every three Because of, I now when I do donate, I drop my hemoglobin level. PVC, mm. So yeah. not, not my PVC, my hemoglobin. That was what they checked for you. Mm. Has to yeah, be that extra excess. More I have, you need to take blood. Please come and donate. Let me take the next So INEC chairman. Um, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu speaking to staff of the commission before the Anambra State election addressed the fact that INEC is ready. He, was, he also had a meeting with the, DS, the leadership of the DSS, the um, Nigeria Civil Defense Corps, and his address was to ensure everybody understands that he is in a two day visit to assess preparation level for this election. Everybody is waiting for the Anambra mm, yes, State sir. election. It's going to be this weekend. Very soon we can't talk about it on, on air anymore, but it's important that everyone keeps tension calm, people go out to vote, and as much as possible, we avoid loss of life. So he's mm. saying, on the part of INEC, they are ready. ready. And he has spoken to security operatives to keep calm, no violence, let's not react in violence to them, but we're hoping to see a peaceful election come to Yeah, so the federal government has revealed how a total of 14,423 Boko Haram members have surrendered. Uh, they are saying that the terminal date for the sect is September 15, 2021. We're in November now. Mm -hmm. So, and they also said um, that according to the executive director, Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, Mr. Haman Toko, that banditry and kidnapping, uh, paying for ransom will come to an end between March to April 2022. They've taken out statistics starting from 2019 to, you know, ascertain how this is going to happen. And they said that this is not what the, a fight that only the NFIU will be doing. They are deploying the EFCC, the ICPC, and other, I think about 45 agencies to handle this, to bring, you know, banditry, kidnapping to an end. According to them, they said uh, they had just about uh, 15,000 Boko Haram members. Now that 14,423 has, you know, surrendered, there's hope for them. They said their leaders, uh, the Shekau, most of them have started committing suicide and they are scattered about. So they are winning the war. That right now, the North is even, is even safer than the North Central. And they will continue winning this war and bring it down to banditry. So it seems like there's hope that by next year, banditry and kidnappings will end. There's no way to next year. So, um, Bangor, Deputy Governor and the Lagos State Building Control Agency differ on why 24 floor tower collapsed. Journalists not targeted for witch hunts is Malami. Two professors, four others abducted as gunmen raid Uni Abuja. Supreme Court alleges bid to kill Justice Orderly or case independent investigation. I think we're taking most of the stories. Ubu Kibana released over 24 
after 24 hours in EFC custody. Let's see if story is not taken. Insecurity get military out of southeast to douse tension. And uh, why police must speak out over killing of Imo Monarch, says Igbo leaders. It's a cook. It's a cook. Okay, let me see. Where's that? I don't DMO. know. But go ahead with this cook story. So the demo is planning to, that the Department of um, the Management Office is planning to issue a fourth sovereign suku for about 200 to 250 billion naira to finance again road projects. Since 2017, they've issued over 362.57 billion worth of suku. This is um, Sharia compliance. Yes, um, yes, it's right here. Because I was also going to talk about the collapse, but it was important to, make, to, to mention here um, that the deputy governor was there yesterday, and mm -hmm. I think the governor was probably even there last night or maybe this morning. Mm -hmm. But um, the, he was saying, he, he was um, almost contradicting what the, the suspended GM had said, saying that there was no approval, that they only approved for 15 floors. Mm -hmm. But the deputy governor went there and said, no, there was indeed an approval to, for 21 floors. Oh. We'll see how that goes. That's what the deputy governor is saying. But, so we don't know where the hanky-panky is here, but I guess the investigations are ongoing. And I know the, the governor had actually uh, assembled a panel in, involved um, the, uh, the engineers, um, I think town planning organization, uh, the architects, the bricklayers. So I say, please add us to this. Yes, uh, be added. Uh, so this is a say, please, we have an association. Yes. Yes. To, Thailand yeah. too. All of them to say we to come. You, you know, know, you know when the <laughs> professionals are speaking English, the people yeah. who execute and people who are arranging the board, yeah. they are the ones who have all the side comments mm. on. Yeah. There's base okay, base okay, yes. Yes. that kind of thing. So I'd love to hear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. nice. So the bricklayers, no problem. Association, hey, Thailand too. All of them, they never retire that late, no. Yeah. It's just the big yeah. okay. So yeah, all of them are part of the, uh, part of the committee, in the independent committee to investigate what happened. It's important because even um, the former governor of Lagos State has said that we must get to the bottom of this and see what happened. Okay, let's go to a quick break. When we come back, we're still going to be discussing this building collapse. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Indiana mbara ge kwe nunti o Obodo oma kanyi na cho Kanyi na cho Nke ge buto kani hu O kani hu Ntu liaka nke ga dimma Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known, for when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, 
it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known, for when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. How we're doing guys is the makeup in progress makeup check are the scripts on the prompter script check are we set in the pcr all tip in place pcr check clock is ticking time is racing lights are plans all set 120 minutes of hot entertainment we are ready for the mission How we're doing, guys, is the makeup in progress? Makeup check. Are the scripts on the prompter? Script check. Are we set in the PCR? All tip in place? PCR check. Clock is ticking, time is racing, lights are. Plans all set. 120 minutes of hot entertainment. We are ready for the mission. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known, for when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. Did she just say she spent the money? You spent the money? If Trisha was your girlfriend and you can't give her a hundred thousand naira, who can you get up your other one now? Eh? In Nollywood, we know how to give a good shout. Hey, hey, why they go carry go, 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 go inside room with you? Come on, it's the open day inside, Babo. Because if we don't, you just won't get it. Ah! Nicola, I took care of you. Who were you wasting our time then? You had us beg you. Sorry, I was just trying to mess around with you. What? Shouting is fun when it's dramatic. Thanks for staying with us. So we're still discussing the hot topic of the 21-story building collapse on Gerard Road, Ikoyi, Lagos State. Here are some of the facts that we know. We know that the governor has since suspended the GM, Mr. Gwalao Oki, um, and has also constituted uh, an, uh, a panel comprising of members of the architect, Nigerian architects, the professionals in the engineering, and I think town planning um, uh, organizations. And I had said earlier that the Bricklayers organization are also asking to be part of that panel. So there will be an investigative panel to assess uh, what exactly happened. Now, initially, the, the suspended GM had also come out early to tell us that the, the owners or the builder had requested for an additional 
approval to make it 21 floors, that he did not give them the approval, that they only had approval for 15 floors. He came to tell us that earlier, but the deputy governor was there yesterday and he did confirm to the news, uh, to the press, that indeed there was an approval for 21 story, story uh, buildings. So there's still that conflicting um, information. We're not sure well, what, what's happening, but we have our correspondent there just to give us an update. Uh, we also know that 21 people were found dead so far, confirmed corpses were pulled out. Nine people survived. Of the nine, two have been, um, uh, have been uh, the, um, discharged already. And uh, we're still hoping, and I think that they, there are more people in there, and they're trying to see how we can actually get them pulled out. Um, Bimbo, are you there? Hello, Bimbo. Okay, we're still trying to connect with Bimbo, but let me come to you because, I mean, we're all here when uh, subside um, condominiums in Florida happened back in June. And exactly something similar. I think theirs was 12 floors, 12-story building. And it came crumbling down. And it took about almost two weeks for the mm. rescue operations. I mean, because I remember eight days, I was still saying, ah, after eight days, we didn't find anybody alive. I was still worried. I was watching CNN then. I was still worried. But one of the issues we're having today is that Family and friends are going to Ikoi saying, listen, let us come in, allow us access to go and help because it's the, 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 they are complaining about the slow pace of rescue. But we're saying that this situation, we don't want to situation where there's double jeopardy of those within and even the rescuers themselves endangering their own lives. So how do you see the, um, the speed at which it's, good, it's being done? Do you think the government is doing enough or they can do more, at least to elevate the fears of family and loved ones who are wondering if their loved ones are still under the yes, rubble? Yes. Of the official speaking um, journalists were saying at some point when they took a break after 1 a.m., they started to hear voices within. I was wondering, why did you take a break? They're supposed to be on shifts. So a batch of people have been involved in rescue. They take a break. Another batch continue with the work. It's not supposed to be a break because every second counts at right. this point. You can just be lucky at some point, be the last breath, or you know, at some point that you intervene in that um, and rescue somebody. Right. I'm just wishing, because this is not the way to go, we're all wishing that this is faster, that there are better machines. And be in fact, a magic wand to help people out of where they are. It's not yeah. a thing to desire or, right. or wish on anybody. So we'd we'll definitely like to get um, maybe one of the last summer to help mm -hmm. us understand this issue exactly of break. Because let's yes. understand if indeed they do take, take breaks. Talk about your thoughts so, on this. Um, I, nobody wants to be Nobody wants to be in this kind of situation. Mm -hmm. The, survive, the um, family members of these victims are not, it's not even a rational thing. It's a point of, if, if there's any chance that my, my family member can be alive, I would love to be able to offer help. And um, beyond our emotional mm -hmm. outburst or our, our response of thinking, nobody can do it like the way I would do it because they don't understand how I feel, how I feel right now, is the fact that everyone that goes to that site is also endangered because any sleep can lead to the loss of additional lives. Mm. And every La, uh, Lasema official have been, officials have been trained to deal with these circumstances in a way that individuals are not. So there are safety guidelines that the families of these um, victims of this um, collapse would not be able to observe. So I would appeal, number one, to all the family members of the victims that they should please exercise a bit of patience because... This is the same thing that happened when we saw the soft side too, because many of our members are just crying, feeling bad, feeling wishing that it just went for site inspection. Actually, for those that they were investors in that place that just went for site inspection, those that were not, those that went to work there, and every other person, no life is, um, no, nobody's life is more important mm, than the right. other, and this is a huge loss. However, the controversies going back and forth mm. concerning. Um, whether there was approval, or quality not. of building, all of that brings us to what we have been saying on your view, we the people of Nigeria. All right, I'm told that, uh, let me pause you for a second, talk away, because I'm told that we have Mr. Bashir Idris Garga uh, on the phone, Deputy Director of Operations at NEMA. Good morning, Mr. Bashir, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Good morning. Good to have you on the phone. So before I even ask for the updates, um, is it true that your team member took a two-hour break? Well, no, it's not a two-hour break. There's just a shift. You know, we had to rush it. This operation has been on for mm -hmm. almost two to three days now. Okay. So there is fatigue on the part of some of the responders. And therefore, we have to run ship. And uh, these machines needed to be refueled, and uh, other equipment needed to be brought in. But uh, as I'm talking to you now, the operation is ongoing. Debris clearance is ongoing. 
Okay. Okay, sir, so we are worried about that uh, break, no matter how small it is, because we have people in that rubble that are still alive. And you know the way things go. Before you know it, the oxygen will be finished and they will be gasping for air so that we don't have more casualties while we're still trying to rescue them. Um, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't you have... No, I, I wanted to ask, is there any way you can deploy more hands, even if it's from other states, so that you. nobody is having to rest a bit and all hands are on deck? Mm. As I'm talking to you now, all the responders are here with various expertise, right. just detecting light, just ready with oxygen to give in case we find some people in this place. All right, so let me ask you, sir, because, of course, Nigerians are worried about the timing. I know rescue operations take time. But could you give us an expected time to know how would this be conclusive? Because we're really worried about how long yeah, right will it now, take? We have, just, we, have just, we have just blocked the Portugal's major road to that place because traffic was uh, obstructing operations and the movement of some equipment. But I cannot be sure when this operation is going to be over. But we'll keep you posted as we go on. Thank you. All right, sir. Thank you very much. I guess he had to leave. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, I, I was see. going to say that. So this morning on my way to work, I just passed by that place and I slowed down a bit to really observe what was happening. I still uh, saw a lot of people clustered around the environment. In fact, there's a bit of a gridlock when you are, you know, going through that area. And I still see a lot of people you know, still hovering around. And I'm worried because I know that when it, this sort of thing happens, they usually condone that area off so that professionals will have time to do what they're supposed to do without interference from family members and friends and people who have lost loved ones. And I understand that this is an, a very emotional. If you have a family member, there, of course you want to be there. But can we as Nigerians take a step back right. and allow the professionals do the work? Let's right. just help them in prayers. And also the question I asked uh, our guy that just called in this morning that he was a bit, uh, he just responded like that, is something that, it's a no-brainer. You get help. If you need to get help from Ogun State or Shun State, all those states that are around to ensure that this thing is being carried right. out and nobody's taking a break because right. people will not understand why you have to rest when there are still people who are likely to okay. die. I, so he, he, he did, he did confirm that all hands are on deck, so we're just hoping that indeed all hands are on deck. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. At TVC Communications, we're all about our audience, millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the news bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded at the NMMA TV station of the year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our app. TVC and...
we're doing, guys, is the makeup in progress. Makeup. Check. Are the scripts on the prompter? Script. Check. Are we set in the PCR? All team in place. PCR. Check. Clock is ticking. Time is racing. Lights up. Plans all set. 120 minutes of hot entertainment. We are ready for the mission. How we're doing, guys? Is the makeup in progress? Makeup. Check. Are the scripts on the prompter? Script. Check. Are we set in the PCR? All team in place? PCR. Check. Clock is ticking. Time is racing. Lights up. Plans all set. 120 minutes of hot entertainment. We are ready for the mission. How we're doing, guys? Is the makeup in progress? Makeup. Check. Are the scripts on the prompter? Script. Check. Are we set in the PCR? All team in place? PCR. Check. Clock is ticking. Time is racing. Lights up. Plans all set. 120 minutes of hot entertainment. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing uh, the building collapse. We're trying to reach our correspondent. Uh, Bimbo, are you there? Yes, sir. Hi, Bimbo. Thanks for joining us on the show. Could you give us an update on what you see so far at the site? Any of any officials there? What are they doing right now? Yeah, it's it's the third day, and we are still here at the site of the uh, incident. Um, talking about um, um, at the site where a high-rise building, you know, collapsed, you know, on Monday, killing many and leaving several others injured. Don't forget that. Uh, um, um, nine victims were rescued alive from the rubble, while at least 19, you know, uh, were discovered uh, dead. Now, uh, we also told you that three out of the nine victims that were rescued were given first aid treatment right there, right here on the site of the collapsed building, and they were subsequently uh, discharged. Um, I would also, also like to let you know that um, this is the site of the collapsed building this morning. You can see right here behind me. Um, rescue operations just started. I mean, journalists are not allowed to move close to the site. But then I would like to let you know that the mood right here is still that of despondency. Earlier, I had the opportunity of speaking with people whose families, you know, uh, were involved, you know, in the incident. And then from the information I garnered from them, a lot of them, you know, are still worried. Uh, they do not have information regarding, you know, the relation who, of course, were involved in the incident. I saw a lot of them moving around, asking questions, trying to know their fate with regards to, you know, what will happen at the end of the day, talking about um, some of their relations who they believe are still trapped uh, in there. Um, okay, also, I would like to let you know, I mean, you will agree with me that... Um, there have been a number of developments in the surrounding this sad story since the news broke uh, right uh, from the uh, suspension of the general manager of the Lagos State Building Control Agency to uh, calls, you know, uh, for more investigations into the immediate and remote causes of this uh, particular tragic incident. You will agree with me that, of course, uh, that so much has been happening. Of course, more events are still unfolding even as we are here. But and the more heartbreaking side of the story is the fact that some people who are here, of course, if you can see behind me, those are uh, uh, people whose families or relations, you know, are still trapped in there. A lot of them are angry, and they told me that um, they believe that um, uh, rescue efforts put into this particular incident is, uh, you know, are not enough. Uh, I spoke with one uh, lady who got here at about 6:30 a.m. Uh, she told me uh, a, a, a 26 younger sister was trapped in there, you know, as she, I think she's an intern, you know, in one of uh, the offices in there, and then she says she's been here as early as 6.30, but then she, she sounded, you know, unhappy, and that's because um, there was nothing happening here at about 6.30 a.m. When she got here, rescue operations had not started. They were just made to sit down, you know, out there. So a lot of them were venting, you know, their anger, saying uh, rescue operations, you know, put into the entire, you know, uh, recovery recovery process, you know, are not enough that uh, they should, of course, have um, put into consideration the fact that a lot of them 
them are passing through, going through hard times. They really need to know the fate of what will befall, you know, the, 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 um, um, their relations who, of course, are still trapped in there. Now, I forgot to tell you that um, um, six, the remaining six victims who, you know, were rescued, uh, you know, from you know, the rubble in here, you know, have been taken to the General Hospital in Northern, and they are still receiving treatment as we speak. But as I'm standing, uh, we are yet to know if more bodies are still going to be, you know, brought out of the rubbles. You can see behind me, activity behind me there is showing that for you. Go ahead. Before yesterday, they were able to hear some voices which they traced to find the location of the rescue. Are they still hearing any form of voices of the people inside the rubble? Okay, no, okay. Earlier, I tried to get that particular information you know, from uh, one of the emergency responders here, yeah, but what they told us is as such this morning, I mean, the, the rescue operation team actually walked through the night from what I garnered, and what I was told is that um, they are still not sure if there are more bodies trapped in there. So we are not even sure if they heard voices, and we are not even sure if we still have more bodies, you know, that are trapped in there. But as of yesterday, 19, you know, bodies were discovered dead. I'm talking about the bodies that were, you know, brought, you know, out of the rubble. And as it stands, we, have, we still have nine survivors, you know, from this Bimbo, the, the, Bimbo, Bimbo, let me let me ask you this very quickly, because the name Femi Oshibono has been all over social media. I mean, he's the owner or the builder. And we need to confirm, is he, has he been rescued? Is he alive? Has he been arrested? I have, we have no update on him. We're just hearing his name all over. Could you confirm to us if he's amongst those that have been rescued? In there yesterday, one of them, which happened to be uh, a Togolese, and you know they are still right there in the hospital and being given treatment. All right, people, I was to, did you hear my question earlier? You, you probably missed my question. Let me just ask that again. I said the name Femi Oshibono has been all over social media and all over the news for the past couple of days. He's supposed to be the building owner of the builder. Could you give us? Could you confirm if indeed he has been rescued? He's amongst those who have been um, rescued so far by. Uh, the officials at the site. Okay, we can't get. I think we lost her. Can we? we lost her. Yes. Um, when I saw the videos, as we can see, don't look like it's a mission for Rescue. rescuing survivors anymore. It looks like it's just a case of recovering of bodies, and it's really, really sad. Uh, and I, I cannot imagine how the family members that showed up very early in the morning and seeing no what going on would feel. Um, but here is my my take. Uh, Nima was mentioning it off air that oh, is that the gadget they should be? Is that the machine they should be using? You know, many of us from watching a lot of videos and Hollywood has made us feel like there are um, specific instruments that that gadgets, machinery that should be used if you want to do different parts of. Um, process of recovery or excavation. excavation. And the way this is looking, if there's any human being there, when you... It's, like it's, mm. it's just gory. It's just really, really gory. And I feel really <sighs> sad for what our heart goes out to everyone who's lost someone in Nima, that Let place. me just say something for you. For me, um, Bimbo's account on, you know, people waiting for their loved ones at 6 this morning um, and no rescue work, okay. had not started. Recovery of people had not started. I don't want to say bodies. Mm. At uh, this morning confirms that you know they are fatigued and they are on breaks and there are no volunteers to continue the process mm. of rescuing. So Other the member boss replied us quickly, mm. but the fact is that truly, yes, as expected, they are fatigued. They can't do this work 24 hours around the clock, but they need to have a shift, and that has not been confirmed. From what we heard earlier and what Bimbo confirmed now. There's no shifts. They are on breaks when they are fatigued, and work will have to stop for that. So we need to see continuous work. Aside the kind of machines that we have, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. Also, those family members who are waiting and looking at those rubbles are continually traumatized because yeah. they've not seen the bodies or confirmed if their loved ones are not on that site. So somebody should be handling psycho, whatever, whatever. Yeah. The BBG grandma, they like to speak around managing trauma for them. They should be doing it already for them now. It is not a time for us to sit down while we're investigating this and leave other areas, you know, just uh, lax, laxing. They should okay. be investigating this along yeah. as, re as uh, rescuing and also managing right. people whose family, uh, loved ones and family members are in that trouble. Let's go on a break. I mean, I'm traumatized. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll take some calls. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
love you. We'll be right back. I want to go. 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 I to go. I want 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 to Is that how you say? Where are you going to say? Is that how you say? Where are you going to say? At 
TVC Communications, we're all about our audience. Millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With news bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV station of the year, TV News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TV News watched by... Thanks for staying with us. So we're still going to be taking calls on this uh, issue on the building collapse because there's so many factors um, because that we're hearing that it's not just about the fact that the approvals were given or not given, but there are also issues of structural integrity of the materials being used. Um, so we'd like to get here from our viewers. You can call us on 081-270-53687, 091 You can also send us messages and... Um, on Facebook and YouTube, we're happy to read your messages. Now, what's most disturbing is what our correspondent just told us, that there are people that came in there as early as 6.30 a.m. this morning and rescue hadn't started. And that's quite worrisome because what we see or expect is that rescue continues around, around the, the clock, clock yeah. and then there are shifts. But the Nemer officer who spoke earlier was saying that all hands are on deck. He did confirm that they do take breaks. But we're saying that do we need breaks. And even if they're taking breaks, how, how fast... You expect I rescue. Now, I even have a problem with how the rescue is being done. I do not think we're doing it right. Uh, from the video we saw uh, just now, um, if there's anybody in that rubble and that thing just clips you, it's going to cut off some parts of your body. It's not... I, I think that we should have found a way to get like a scanner. I don't know. I'm not a structural engineer. Uh, I'm yeah, just please, it's my opinion. Please, it's no, my please opinion. Yeah. I was that like a scanner to know mm -hmm. exactly where people are mm -hmm. and machines that will lift them. Not see. I, did you not but, see that? But if you that so one, the scanner will pick now. up the metals. Wait, All the metals now. are there. Will be pick wait, up. Wait, now, wait now. Let mm -hmm. let me finish. We have multinational companies here who I believe would yeah. have machines that would be able to do this. Why are we not asking for their help? Why are they not suggesting? Why are they not bringing their yeah. machines to mm -hmm. the site so mm -hmm. that we can do this right? I feel the rescue, I, I feel like it's not rescue, like I said, that's going on right now. So we need to get things right. If you need help, seek for help. This is not a time to be proud. Right. That's it's also a time to we are, volunteer. Right. Yes, volunteer. So don't wait for them to ask let for me just, help. Let me clarify. Mm. So there's a human perspective, a mm. reasonable instinct of what how, how we think it should be done we watch a lot and of films though, now, and there's enough. a professional perspective on mm. how it's done we don't know these things and it's I, i'm not i'm not disagreeing with you i'm just saying that there are different areas we yeah. can feel that with a listen just pull this thing out lift it up mm. and bring superman and to lift it up the and movies bring that we watch and yes, when things so, of, i mean there's realism of what are the equipments on ground and, and also, what they can see, do. There's also the fact that our people might not even be well equipped. So the, the ones we see in America, the they have all the gear yes. to protect them in case something falls over. The these boys, these guys are going in, nothing. So yeah. they're also being careful. So let us not compare Hollywood okay, so, so, to uh, reality please, here. Before you come, so when we don't have to wait for issues to happen before we know the right equipment to get for our country. Certainly. We have had issues like this several. There are buildings that have fallen. We've had to go and lift people or rescue people from such buildings. Mm. Why is that till now we haven't gotten machines? Mm. Paradventure, this sort uh, of thing happens. Do we have to wait all the time and lament? Because we had like we Nigeria, had we lament messages. that we do not have mm -hmm. the right machines, we do not have the right training, okay. we do not have the right gadget till now. All right, so let, let, me, let, me, let me take this call. Come to you, Niman. Good morning, are you there from Abuja? Oh, wow. Hello, good morning, are you there? 
Charles. Hello? Hi, Charles. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yes, uh, it's unfortunate. This is a national disaster. Uh, I, I believe... Hello? Yes. You're listening to the TV. I have to cut you off. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So we've had a beauty collapse in the past that, you know, that should have given us the right experience to learn from. How did we rescue in the Lekki collapse? It was even worse. I think had, they had more numbers because they had people on site before that one happened. We had the synagogue collapse. All happened in Lagos. So that we have this one now, we're talking about gadgets. Again. Also, if you're a company that you have these gadgets, because we know them, oh, mm. those ones see something happen in their But our companies. producer just confirmed that mm. Julius Berger was on site yesterday. Okay. That he was saying. So, so, we, so, so, we, we, so we don't, we don't have, have all the full We don't have a 360 view, on this. but there are people actually helping and supporting so the So you have the right gadgets. We shouldn't have caterpillars in yellow doing this. We know the one that, I don't want to mention the company name for branding sake, that where they go and lease these big machines when mm. they are doing. I know that company, when you drive past them, <laughs> they have the machines Can there. you call them You out, know why I'm saying this? Us. Because when we had the fire in front of the military barracks in Ojo, it wasn't fire service trucks that quelled that fire. For a fire service to travel from here to Ojo was a journey. Mm. It was the military, Navy, what and all of them that, that brought What year was that? That happened, I think, 2019. Okay. The fire, the petrol tanker, where the roads yes. were bad. That, you know, that fire that people drove into and it was burning for hours. It was the military that brought out their fire truck. Navy bar barracks brought out theirs and some other companies, Bengasin, I think, from the depots that brought out the fire trucks that called that fire. That's what we expect now. Brotherliness, help, love, everything that we need now. Not this kind of slow pace of... We, we saw B Bimba was there live and we saw what was happening right behind her. Right. Nobody's managing the people whose family members are there. Yeah. I say it again. And the slow pace of that work. If Neymar is saying that they are doing anything, it is slow. This is day three. Right. Okay, let me come to talk about your thoughts. So, um, first of all, oh, well, let me pause you for a second. Ibrahim's been holding for a while. Ibrahim from Yobe, are you there? Good morning. Good morning, Ibrahim. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. You're live. Okay. Um, I think anytime we we are neglecting our anything that is serious issue, we, okay, we are neglecting everything that is a serious issue in our country. The only time we stop. The country that is when something tragic happens. In this case, I think the major issue is that we are not looking at what our emergency response is assisting home. You said uh, what you tell me, an engineer who is earning less than 100,000 to go and provide a billion, a billion. It's so hard to hear him. Yeah. 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 So, okay. um, like I was, uh, messages from Facebook. First, as Akibuiwa says, the building of the collapse of the Ikoyi building that has claimed over 20 lives was predictable and preventable. Sadly, it could still happen somewhere else within our country as long as we continue to ignore the hard lessons from previous building collapse. Um, and developers, government, advisors, civil um, servants continue to cut corners and get away with it. While nothing can bring back the innocent lost lives, journalism and civil society organizations have a vital role to play in tackling the fallout of these disasters. So for me, this is an issue that we should also mm. talk about, is the fact that this was preventable, this was already spotted, mm. like people had seen that this thing might happen. How, what can we do to right. help Sorry, out? Sorry, I'm trying to understand. <laughs> Build because something. I'm trying to see... I'm trying to. I'm not. A, I'm not an engineer. Nobody mm -hmm. here is an engineer. Yeah. So but just using t t t t the first layer, sense. Mm -hmm. second layer, third layer, right? Yeah, yeah. And everything that comes out crumbling down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the, we haven't seen a caterpillar, a caterpillar trying to pull down the rope from the, the corner. Mm. No, no, from the corner up here. Mm. So from if I corner. have somebody on this floor, mm. on this floor, mm. and on this floor. And I have a caterpillar trying to bring out the, the rubble from the yeah. sides. Because I'm just trying to reason why they're doing that. Yes. Because they don't want to endanger the person that's probably inside here. Mm. So what I would have liked is maybe I have a machine that can just lift out floor one <laughs> out. Mm. Let's all see yeah. floor two. But that, that's not reality. So yeah. the rubble reality is all Reality in Nigeria. I don't, I, but let's, I don't know. When I, we saw soft side now. Mm. Soft side, I saw this caterpillar. Yes, there. They were pulling it out like that. It wasn't as if they had something to just lift up floor mm. one right. and see that. So I think they have to be as realistic They started the pull out like this after a few days when they were done, when they knew it was impossible because they had like guys coming mm -hmm. out from the house and all of that. We followed that story. Here is where, where what my take is. Like we, like we know, these things happen all the time. People, we 
we have enough agencies to prevent these things from happening. We have enough checks. Like, it's not a policy deficit. Mm. We have material testing. We have a building inspection. And what we see being done, and it is my industry, so I understand what is being done, is everybody is trying to maximize profit mm. at the detriment of who is going to end up staying but there. But we also understand that if this had happened in another state, it's probably mm. going to be worse. I mean, if there's any chance for this to be alive, it's the fact that it happened in, in Lagos. Lagos so I'm telling yeah. you. It's the fact that it happened in Lagos. So yes. this is probably the best that we have that is on mm. ground. And it's mm. not good enough. We need to it's do It's possibly more. not good enough, yeah, but it's the best that we have on ground. Let me take this call from Denmark. So good sad. morning. Are you there? So sad. Hello, Dele, are you there? Please, when you call in, listen to me, not the TV. Hello, Hello. Dele, are you there? Okay, I think we've lost that call. Go well, ahead, Nima. There's something that I must say very carefully. The uh, developer had, I believe, continuous warning. So there was continuous promo as a response to continuous warning. Why do we, when we're doing things, take a warning as bad belay or negativity? Mm. Because for the time it took a royalty there, it took prayer warriors there, it took a singer there, there was something you was responding to. That's me thinking now. Mm. There was someone saying, check the quality. Check, do you have to increase? And rather than listen to that voice and do mm. professional structural checks, or call an engineer or an expert to say, why is this person just saying, telling me, buy me woe, check whether it's true, whether mm. I should worry. You're not taking royalty there to say, hey, ah, see it, when this thing is complete. Mm. Why are we... You see, thank you, it's, Nima. It's, it's interesting that we focused so much on responding to on rescue. But the real crux of it is with the people. Yes, it's with the people. We, we, we the people have that. built this and yes. regarded the government's um, warnings and regulations, we right? Yes, we, we circumvented it. And also the fact that we have refused to focus on due process. Mm. What have we done to oh, contribute to this? Because well, now it's even government did not government criticism did not. But the, me, we the people as as bad this. Somebody must have criticized that building for going beyond no, the flaws that they are. Highly connected persons. When I say well, highly connected, yes, very, very mm -hmm. highly connected. This is Gerardo. This is like if, if like ah. if you are you have arrived. Yes. When you are ah. building in developers' world, if you can build in Nikoyi, yeah. you are a big person. <laughs> so there are many issues on the uh, on the uh, for a for a structural, the structural engineer to say, we are no longer working, we renounce ourselves from this construction work. We clear. don't want our name to be associated. That's why people said this was preventable. At no point should that job, should that building have reopened if it wasn't recertified. And I'm happy with the response of the Lagos State Governor in that some, the investigation, before investigation, some people have been suspended that you first go and sit down at home. And because until we have such strong deterrence, every other person will not sit up. Can we now let it trickle down to the civil servants? Because mm. it goes beyond, it, yes, the head should be dealt with, but right. all like moving we the papers around are also culpable in this. That is all we can take on this segment. We'll continue to follow the story all week, and we hope that more people will be rescued alive. Right. Let's go on a break. When we come back, move on to other topics. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. I say no key to me, no mago mago. For this election, for this election, and I'm the state, not for everybody. Now who got say no window? Now my people they talk say so when you the shot bring suya bring suya. Now how body go suffer up? That is to say, there's no action without your own consequence. So if your plan not to carry fake news or steal ballot box or even to kill your neighbor because of this Anambra election, make I just tell you simple and short. You not like Anambra state? Yes, you not like Anambra state because no fake news, no carry carry of ballot box and kill kill of your neighbor equals to peaceful election. My people, peaceful election co equals to peaceful Anambra state. I think you don't hear it. Now the Center for Democracy and Development CDD with support from the UK government, they bring you this message. Guys, we can't leave. We've got to finish the client's order tonight. This time? How about some top tea to cheer us up? Only one bag of top tea makes two strong cups, so taste to no more flavor. Enjoyment, Great. friendship, and upliftment.
At TVC Communications, we're all about our audience, millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With news bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV station of the year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestrial, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our... Welcome back. Hear ye, hear ye. Ladies of Nigeria, <laughs> there has been a gradual, see what over our no, say, a serious increase in the price of cooking gas in our country. The 12.5 kg cylinder of cooking gas that used to be 3,000, me at least this year, I bought it 3,005 this, mm. this year, January, is now 10,000 naira in some, parts of the country. in some parts of our country. Many households have reverted to cooking with firewood, charcoal, kerosene, and others because of, and, and we are really scared of the environmental issues as a result of this. Now, join us on the show is the national president, Diogat Patapata himself, of the Nigerian Association of Liquefied Petroleum Gas Marketers, uh, Mr. Oladako Olatumbosun. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. First of all, 
We are going to hold the Shokoto. Is it with your hands we are holding? Because I just called my gas man and he's telling me that um, probably in my own area here is 8,000. 200. I know I still bought it from him about 6,000 naira or even 5,000 yeah. a few few months back. So, and, and I know in some certain parts of Lekki, it's probably 10,000. Yes. Certain parts of the East is 10,000. Mm -hmm. Why are we having this increase in gas? Thank you, Murajo. Um, this is a very hot topic that concerns all Nigeria because every human being, old, young, or middle age, we must eat to survive. And 90% um, of food processed in Nigeria involve eating, not even Nigeria, all over the world, you will eat. And the only way to eat your food and very healthy way is to use cooking gas. Mm. So cooking gas is a common and essential product to every household. And uh, if it's an essential, it must be affordable, it must be available for somebody to know it's living well. If you are cooking in a mix that is different from using cooking gas, it really is a substandard living system, mm. that the lifestyle is substandard. So for Nigerians to have a standard lifestyle, they should be able to cook in a very friend, environmental friendly way, economical way, and mm. a convenient and healthy way. Yeah. And that is what we are losing now. And it should be our concern that as a woman being, how do we elongate our lifespan? Mm. How do we elongate our value of being a citizen, of being a country? So it's, I'm part of, I'm worried too. Because, like right, they said last year or this year, if I buy a bidder that is 20 metric tons of LPG, it's about 3.8 million. Today, to buy, I need about 12 million naira. That is three or four times of that money I used to buy. Where is the capital? So it costs across the board. And the genesis of this problem, let's just go and Please. look into it. We were not like this before, gas was available. And there's no scarcity of gas worldwide. But the problem is, at a point in time, the government was thinking of domesticating supply. Yes. How do they mean? So that we will not be taking our hard hand volley exchange to other countries yes. to buy gas. Because right now, 70% to 65% of gas we use in Nigeria are being imported to this country. It's being importation done from Algeria, importation is done from America, importation done from other neighboring African countries to supplement our need. Before now, what we used to do is that the demand for gas was very low because yes. the awareness was not there. Yes. Do we agree with me that those days when you want to rent a house, the landlord will ask you, hope you are not using gas, yeah. Yes. But after a lot of campaign from investors, from practitioners, people start embracing it. Yeah. And gas becoming a common thing. Even yeah. villagers, as they come to city, they buy in their cylinder, yeah. take it there and cook. Everybody yeah. was quite nice. So with the population we have in this country, we have about 240 million, right. which is supposed to be a very good market and good asset for us. And when we have about 15% of that population adopting gas, it's which number that the population and the usage has gone beyond the facility we have we locally. Have. And the facility we have locally has to do with infrastructure of the exploration and processing of this gas. Yes. What we were doing before, and we are investing on some storage, we have terminals coming up, but how many exploration companies are really coming up? Mm. So when we now see that usage and people have been using gas, government are looking at, ah, these people are important the money. This is another source of revenue, number one. Then the, the foreign exchange demand for this is... Wait, let me quickly ask a follow-up question because okay. we know that only NLNG cons yeah, currently I'm com does. I'm but can we that. have? I mean, why come we don't have a private sector also supporting as we've done in Thank power? Thank you. I'm coming to that. So let me land my story so okay. I can okay. link it with NLNG. So okay. you have the background and we can know what's the impact and what the solution. So the impression was that the demand is going high and there's a lot of foreign exchange capital flight taken out of this country to okay. buy gas. So government were thinking about let's domesticate. But before you can domesticate, you must be able to have sufficient supply locally. Yes. Mm. We've not gotten to that. Don't forget the four of our environmentalists are not working. Right. If they are working, they will produce LPG, yes. which will have meet some requirements. Mm. NLNG is the only one producing the largest gas available locally now. Yes. They are producing about, say, 30% of yes. what they do. They, are, they have capacity to produce up to 450. In most cases, they don't even produce up to that 450. They right. just increase it now. So what's available for energy is about 330, 350. Ton, ton, I mean, thousand metric tons. Yes. Meanwhile, the total demand as of today is about one million two hundred and fifty. Yeah. So there's a gap. There are local small companies that are producing, but the capacity is so low. Yeah. And 
Invariably, you need to import to supplement it, right. and that is the problem. So now when government say, okay, I want to domesticate, if refinery, before the refinery has been working, they it's will produce, easier. they will have to earn energy. Originally, earn energy is supposed not to meet local markets. Mm. It's supposed to be a foreign exchange earner for the country because it's an investment on its own, owned by government and some other shareholders. Mm. And the targets that we produce all this gas, there are a lot of which demand overseas that will supplement our foreign exchange earning in the country mm. and to improve our nature. But because we have deficiency here, and energy has to make all their butane available for local. local. Mm. Still, it's not sufficient. Mm. And don't forget, energy is also mm. about 30 years old in business. Mm. It means the infrastructure is also reducing the well. How mm. well are they maintained? So what they are doing now is to construct another train called Train 7. Exploration is capital intensive and takes a long time to complete. Train 7 will be completed in about five years' time. Yes, the population that is growing is not stopping. Demand for gas is increasing. Then there's a huge gap. So now hey. come here and say, yes, I want to produce fee. I want to stop bringing it. There's going to be a cost. And that's what we are saying. Uh, so We've not gotten to the end of it. The price is still going up. Hey. Well, Currently well, now, nice. most of storage facilities Fast. are dry. There are no <laughs> gas there. People are not loading at terminal now yeah. because importation has stopped and the gas available is not sufficient. No, but I don't understand the over 300% rise in price because if I understand... And importing at the dollar. No, the dollar has not risen by over 300%. So, like, is it that... I know that... Is it free? Is it so free market that there is no form of government um, regulation in how the prices change? Because... One subsidy, yeah, you know, one... I'm not saying subsidy. Hey, I'm saying that... Saying. We, the, there must be a policy that creates the framework of how much is the cost of LPG coming into Nigeria? Mm -hmm. How much is the transportation? How, how much is the reasonable price and transportation you can put on it? You cannot just you can't buy uh, gas for three five and then it goes to eight five in the same year. It, it, no government okay. should allow that yeah. kind of yeah. spike to happen right. by regulation. I understand your yeah. angle talk, but yeah. that's a very ang good angle to yes. look at it. But let yes. me explain what really happened. Okay. All the gas have been imported. Mm -hmm. The local ones there, and that's where role of middlemen come in. Come in. Mm -hmm. And the price template they are using is template of imported gas. Don't forget that foreign exchange wasn't. We were 160 at the time. We were 300. Now we are on 500 and something. These people do not have access to um, official rates at the CBN. They need to settle the counterpart, and there's a time lag they can wait for, and they need to go and look for money from other stocks. So they mm. use their template of parallel market to determine the price of mm. that one takes it up and mm. other charges now in fourth and that is middlemen because when there's scarcity anywhere there's insufficient <laughs> supply mm. people mm. cut on it yeah, so yeah, there's a scarcity and middlemen they are in business they also want to take to advantage money. it is a price the regulated market we were, it wasn't as bad as this before mm. that's why the price was regulated and things were when there's Affordability. Yeah. Where there's no affordability, there's insufficient supply, then things like this will happen. Okay, let me pause you for a second because I have a call that I need to take. Uh, we have Mr. Farin Loi Ibrahim, coordinator Nema back on the phone. Yes. Mr. Ibrahim, you have an update on the on the massive leakage in Ikeja? Yes, uh, it has been brought under control. Okay. And uh, we are urging people to go about their business. Okay. However, the traffic, we are traffic was diverted, we are still maintaining it until uh, repair, uh, repair work is completed on the pipeline. Okay, thank you very so much. Those who, want to prove, those who want to do anything can go, go ahead. ahead. Only traffic will be affected. Okay, thank you very much. It's good to know that it's under control. So there was a gas leakage earlier, yeah. and I'm yeah. so happy that's under control. Uh, yes. So I, I wanted to say that um, I know that we have the natural gas. Mm -hmm. And one of the problems I've heard you highlight now is that we do not have the infrastructure to domesticate yet. And that is what is causing all of this artificial scarcity, so to speak. Yeah. But um, how do you think that uh, the private uh, investors can come in, take advantage of this opportunity, so that we can have gas at cheap rates? The private investors are trying to come in. Okay. Now we have sufficient storage facility, called the terminals as storage facility. Now the exploration is another key. Exploration is capital intensive and takes time. Yes. Already has just been completed. See the capacity. The production, the production they are doing is not very sufficient. Don't forget, I said, we have 240 million people in Nigeria. Yes. And this is essential that every house we do. So the requirement is increasing on a daily basis. Nigeria has capacity to do 5 million metric tons per annum. We are just doing 1,250. Mm. And still we cannot produce enough. Yeah. So it takes time for this one to come in. And for investors to come, 
what they must be guaranteed is that market is there. And what do you mean by market? Capacity to buy. But we have. We have, no, we have the market no, is there, no, but no, the no, capital. No. You have number. But the capacity to, to buy, buy is, is not there. Yeah. Now the price has gotten to ten thousand. A lot of people have abandoned yes. gas. Mm. Yes. Where they abandoned because their per capita income is low. Average income in Nigeria is about thirty thousand, fifty thousand. If you yes. have fifty thousand naira as a take home in a month, you can't but buy can you 10, budget ten thousand? So, for which gas? is what um, the power guys also had. So they had, we have the numbers. Mm. Oh, 200 million, oh. 200 million. But capacity to to pay for your neighbor is a whole different ballgame. Well, no, that's exactly the problem. Oh, we yes. have number, but the per capita income is ridiculously low. When you when you are trying to price things mm. in line with international price, the dollar they are doing this in India. This is how much they are selling for. This is how much they are selling. For. Go and compare that take home mm, to Nigeria. To and when we now compare the Nigerian take home to dollar, you know it's hey, peanuts. Baro, can we just convert the subsidy that they are still paying for cars that are voluntary to things that people need to survive? Because people must eat. The convenience of cooking with gas now, people will switch to charcoal. Before you know it, the same charcoal that is convenient for every poor man, just as they did kerosene, will become will increase begin again. to go up. Yeah. Can we just be reasonable per level and policies and make sure that we're that, taking well, care that, of the masses? I'm trying to get your solution. What Remove subsidy from petrol immediately. Yes, yes. As a matter of emergency. And then they also will carry gas. Yes. <laughs> uh, they will carry gas. Remember, that, 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 gas. That, that won't solve the problem. Okay, but the so solution well, is just this. a suggestion. Because if you move from one, you're going to have... I'm not, I'm not here for you. I'm not, no, let's talk about hey, subsidy for Let's talk about gas. What we can do to solve the problem, number one, it's only two human beings that can solve this problem. The Minister for Petroleum and Mr. President. Both are one now. Wow. Yes. The Minister needs to recommend to the President. I have issues like this. This is a national issue. It's called okay. on Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And, sir, I need your approval to do this. Let's suspend all charges. When suspend all charges. All charges. Okay. Let's suspend all charges on importation. So that importation can come in the way it used to come in. To meet our needs. To meet our needs. Mm -hmm. Let us see, can we make forest change available for these people? I know we have, we don't have um, uh, unlimited forests in Nigeria. Yes. And the demand for forests is quite high. high. But there must be a way to paralyze it and see how we can pay for some settlements. Let's break down charges. I want to understand the charges. Because you just mentioned the charges. needs to be. So yes. what, what are the charges? Now, the charges, now, the federal government reintroduced VAT, or imported VAT, gas. Yeah. Yes. VAT, yes. I've been there was no VAT on them. But they wrote them, the government agents wrote to all the importers. I said, the product you are, are selling is subject to fee 80, and from 2019, you are supposed to pay. So what they do is to make provision they for the it. Retrospect. No, they've not paid, okay. but they have to go to cost template and adjust their cost template because it becomes a contingent liability on them. Anytime wow. they knock on their door, if they don't pay, they go bankrupt. Hmm. So they have to factor that into cost. Yes. The same thing to import duty, custom. As I'm speaking, custom is on some of them, on their neck. So your issue is the, the VATs are too high. But no, would that solve the problem? Not, yeah. not VAT, too high. No, VAT, VAT should be dropped. Mm -hmm. VAT is dropped. Wait, wait, I want to be sharp. When yeah. VATs are dropped, yes. mm -hmm. then the second, the other area is has to be government so, 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 I mean, supervision. Mm -hmm. So that the middle row, middlemen will not catch on net. Mm -hmm. And that is where moral intervention comes in. It's not regulating the price, but just moral social. Everybody, when you are on check and you know somebody watching you, you mm, sit right. Sit but right. now it's a free for all. Nobody's checking. People are catching advantage. Thank you for making it. Clear. And then, I'll come to you. Let me take perpetual. I'll come to the Good morning, perpetual. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, very clearly. Go ahead, please. Okay. Um, uh, I I have a few questions for your guests because I uh, really I cannot place what he's saying. You know, the, the reason he said now. Well, um, I would like to know. But why is gas so um, unaffordable? He has not really addressed that point. He's just digressing and digressing. It doesn't make any sense. So why is it? Um, there was a time in this same Lagos and in this same Nigeria that we that I bought cooking gas for three, three six or so. But right now it's about nine thousand plus in my area. So Augusta, I'm not saying what you're saying doesn't make sense. But please, can you address why gas is so unaffordable okay. or? Thank you, Perpetua. Let me try to explain what I heard. Maybe, maybe you didn't hear, but this is what he said. And please correct me if I'm wrong. Our population has obviously increased. Mm -hmm. Everybody now is using cooking gas. Mm -hmm. tell, tell, we used to have uh, using coal here, using kerosene charcoal, there. kerosene there. But most people are now using gas. Even mm -hmm. the poorest man is carrying the small, tiny one for his own house. So the demand is higher. He is saying that in Nigeria, we only produce 30% of, of what we need. 
We import 70%. Abi? Correct. And now, because we're having issues with the importation, because um, VAT, well, he's hoping that they, they remove VAT, it'll be easier for the importers to All bring in, mm -hmm. so it'll be more affordable. But right now, it's quite high. There's import they're duties for They're looking the import duties and all that, and they're still looking for forest. This is how they're causing the marketers to increase the prices. So what you paid in January cannot be the same they're paying now, because what they're using to import is totally different. So we don't, that, I mean, that's what he has thank, explained. Thank, thank and, you, Mora, you, you tried to explain, but let me come down Please. at the lower level so yes. told you she can understand me very well. Charges is part of cost. Mm -hmm. If this VAT is dropped and then duties drop, one. Two, the benchmark for pricing of gas is on, based on Mount Bellevue. Mount, Mount, Mount Bellevue is the international pricing index that they use. And worldwide, mm. because of this... Um, Hurricane, erosion, and some other things, and if part of COVID, the price of Mount went up. Mm. So worldwide price went up, and we normally use Mount price because we import company that supplies us. Nigeria is an international company; they price their product based, based on international on price, and that is NLG. NLG price is based on Mount price, mm. and the Mount price went up. When Mount price was low, we were enjoying it. The price was low, so that accounted for it. Then the highest. Cost is the exchange rate. Our exchange rate went from 300 to 500 or something, and these people do not have access to it through the official window. Official they need to go through the black market. parallel market, and that's 570. Mm -hmm. By the time you confirm that, one, the, add cost. It to, the cost template will go up. Ew. So, government, so, government, yeah. government came, sorry, Tokwe, government came and said it was deficit in facility where to keep the gas that is making it expensive. That was what the, the responded in the papers. You said that there were facilities, there were depots that are dry. What I'm yes, saying that there are facilities, facilities and different stages. We have storage facility, mm -hmm. and those are the terminals that are storage facility. The exploiting facility is also an important thing. Mm -hmm. We have about three companies that are actually producing gas in Nigeria. NLG, um, Oredo, and um, Kuala. Those are producing. But what they are producing, we had it together, is not enough to meet the local need. So we now block window for supplementary one, that is the export and import. Mm. That block, the blockage of that one is causing the problem we are having now. And that is leading to that scarcity and high in price. So the, I think the most important is let's talk about the impact of this and the solution to it. That is most important. It had happened, it had happened, the price has gone up. Everybody is feeling it. Yeah. Even we as a person are not enjoying it because mm. of being the business has gone up. If you buy a product today, before you finish selling it, the price has gone. Mm -hmm. You now see the total proceeds. Sales proceeds. It's not even enough. So to go about, you need to go and source capital. You can't continue like Let that. Let me take this call for me, Inka. Okay. Inka, are you there? Good morning, Inka. Are you there? Okay, please jump in here. So I wanted to ask about the um, West Africa gas pipeline, you know, that I believe was supposed to supply gas from Nigeria to other countries. Is it that is no longer is it still functional? Because you know we complain about power and yet we're also still supplying power. Are we still in that space where we have gas, we don't have enough, but we're still supplying mm. because we've signed contracts to supply people? That's one. Number two, whenever government policies come come up, there's always the case of what we what your, your view has stacked with the people, where we circumvent the law. So they provide incentives for as you have re as you have requested, they drop the duties. Mm -hmm and increase um, f um, access to dollar at the official window. Mm -hmm. And suddenly Nigerians will take the official rate and go and buy what is not mm -hmm. what they recommended it abuse for it. and abuse the system. So what are the ways we can avoid abuse? How can we, you are in the system, ensure that there is a, bl a um, closing of all the gaps that usually exist in order to maximize the impact that the government wants for the average Nigerian? And also, can you tell us about what's the update on the West African okay, um, yeah. gas The update on West African pipeline, there are gases. Basically, we are talking about cooking gas. There are not what called natural gas, and there's CCNG. CNG. Mm. Okay? The one they use for power, and the one they used to power the generator and generating power, that's CNG, different from yeah. cooking gas. Cooking gas is propane and butane. Because we are in this part of the world, butane is more accessible here, and that is what NLNG produces. NLNG produces other gases, which they export to the other country, all other natural gases for other purposes. Yeah. So, and that is available. That is to the demand. We are, don't have a problem with that. People still have that in Russia, but it's the cooking gas that they are actually having issue That's the with. Butane. Yes, so that the, the gas is butane. So they are, don't have problem with that agreement arrangement. It's still on. They are supplying those gas. I mean, I don't think there's any problem we from that side. Those. We don't use those 
in a large mm. quantity as such. And people that are using it are not complaining. It's still available. But the price might have also gone up. Which one do we flare? Is it the butane? <laughs> you see, in the process, when you flare gas, you flare butane and propane into it. You, okay. you can separate and take out. Okay. okay. And we are trying to say we stop flying. When you stop flying, we get all this one conserved and be used for some other thing. Even CNG is part of it. So do the types of some process. Is the, I don't want to go into the technicalities. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not an engineer, yeah. but my knowledge in the business, I know what it is. So it's a lot of process that it involves. Okay. And um, what we actually need for home to live is the cooking gas. Can I ask you a question? Are you an importer? I'm, I don't know what part. I'm a distributor. Okay. What do you mean by distributor? I'm a plant owner. So in the value mm -hmm. chain, what we do, we supply. That's the, that's, you just call your uh, mm -hmm. customer now. So I have gas plants. I have gas plants. Right. My members all have gas plants all over the country. Right. May I quickly uh, ask... You didn't answer the... If, uh, um, the um, block, how to reduce, checkmating the system to ensure that... Yes. Abuse tend to happen in everything we do. Not in Nigeria, everywhere. But it's the regulatory agents. There are agents that are shadowed with responsibility to mm. avoid this abuse. If there's no compromise, he if everybody it. does his rule, if everybody we does his rule, rule, then the abuse will be minimized. All we system. need to do is to know that somebody's there checking me. We yeah. say that Nigeria is very easy to govern. Show a sample. When there's an abuse, let there be discipline. Mm. Yeah. Then people see yeah, that. so uh, I wanted to ask if you people are seeing any measure to stop that flaring so that we can conserve guys. Is there any measure from the government to ensure that the flaring stops, especially in, in those uh, companies in Boni and... Uh, there, are are there are regulations to do that. Okay. And uh, it still has to do with infrastructure, and I think government is working on We don't have enough that. infrastructure it's, to exactly. compromise there, so we don't have enough. So also, you know, you, you, in your um, analogy, you mentioned that the Minister of Petroleum needs to speak to the President yes. on the issues and solutions. Mm -hmm. The Minister of Petroleum is the President. So who is speaking to who now? <laughs> yes, see, who I, else would we speak have a to? Minister for we have Minister, Minister for State. Yeah, Minister so we still State. report to the President. Mm. And it's the first... He's been doing wonderfully well for God because he declared... Decade of gas. They are putting some things in place to okay. enhance. But the latest happening now is frustrating all those moves. So the latest happening is frustrating all those moves. The objective of government is to make gas available. That is so why let they're me be sure I understand your solution. So right now, if we stop, stop, hold, put VAT on hold. Mm -hmm. All the other the charges duties. on hold. Yeah. Yeah. So that we have proper waiver and then the importers can bring in enough. Yes. Now that might reduce it a bit because we're still using the international index benchmark, well, benchmark yes. for, for payment, yeah. the model, yes. so the pricing model. So it might, it might come down, but not totally. Well. God bless you, now, that is it. My question is that must we use that international model? Is that, is that the only way? Is that the only option? Can yeah. Because we have it locally. Can't we Kuku, just find a way to do Create it? Create a local pricing model. Money. But would it work? The climate change conference to help uh, us to uh, do uh, uh, one of the solution, one of the solutions at Glasgow yes. is that deforestation we stop by 2030 worldwide. So if you want to stop deforestation 2030, we must improve on, on our gas, on our gas mm -hmm. available. Then we need to attract investors to come on exploration. And for investors to come on exploration, they must be sure the market is there. Market here is purchasing power. Mm, because gas longer. cannot be adulterated. If gas can be adulterated, you will have seen some standard. Yes. The one that is affordable. They like all the products. They do what they produce what is affordable to Nigerians. Yeah. They tell you this who cannot they are East African, they can't buy this the But gas cannot be adulterated. If you do that, you are playing with fire. So is the standard must maintain and you must be able but to pay that. But the problem with the investors is that it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's very capital intensive. Yes. And but if we if we have if it's, let's just say um twenty percent have purchasing power. Is that enough numbers to, have, to get an investor to It's to not. That is why we have to continue with import. For now. But the ultimate destination is for us to produce locally. But for now, we still have to depend on importation. Well, are you saying we don't have to do this thing? Don't we have, can't we have, can't Tokwa just start a company and say, okay, I want to start small, uh, some small, small, small modular scale refineries that yeah, we can yeah, use yeah, and encourage? Yeah, they are coming up. Okay, we have four refineries. The four refineries are not working. We are expecting Dangote to come on board. When that water comes on board, <laughs> even, the gas, <laughs> even, the even, even the gas that is going to produce, the, the, the kind of opportunity, the kind of environment, usage things, options are available for him. It's more than making for gas. He can use it to be for his fertilizer. He can use it to generate power. At the end, you find that the quantity of gas, if at all, mm. that will be available, you, get the you may not, not solve the problem. And then the pricing so, system will be the that way, same. The way Christians are waiting for Jesus Christ to come, mm. Nigerians are waiting for that good thing. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know, our government is trying to get funds. So if we take away the uh, VAT and those charges, how would they now make money? 
But all these ones are long-term solution. Long-term mm. solution to ensure that we have gas and we don't come mm. perpetually depending on foreigners. foreigners. You, let me take you back. Years back, we were importing gas from Niger and Benin. Mm. Even before this embracement, before people adopting gas, we were importing from Niger and Benin Republic. Mm. But the question, the short-term measure now, let there be gas available mm. while we are planning on the long, long term. term. When yes. gas is available, people can afford the investor will come, they will mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, invest on exploration. Right. A lot of companies have gotten license for exploration. I don't want to mention any name. It that take about five, even 27. 27 takes about seven mm -hmm. years, five years to complete. So in about five, seven years' time, we yeah. must be able to produce enough gas. Then we can now say bye-bye to importation. But now, mm. we, we have not... That we right. have let, not me, let me quickly come to Sony Mark. Oh, we are pumping this gas into barges and taking it abroad to sell. You need to respond to that. Also, Bobby Roland says you are a distributor, and that's why you're saying they should remove VAT. That would only improve their profitability and not reduce the price for the common man. I don't know. Distributor, I'm, I'm a value chain, a distribution value chain. I'm a mm -hmm. plant owner. And all my members all over the world, all over Nigeria, are plant owners. Different from distributor. Distributor buys from us mm -hmm. and they resell. Even as a plant mm -hmm. owner, but, as a plant, but we play a significant role in the mm -hmm. distribution chain. Okay. So how beneficial is the VAT? Hey, can to? we not look at the beneficial to him and the beneficial to the Nigerian? I'm just saying that. It's easy to say, oh, you, you want to benefit from this. Mm. But the truth is that if we How take the idea of that some will stop VAT, let more people get it. Maybe we stop thinking it's that it's actually not directly to him. It's direct the the, the benefit is directly to the importers. Yeah. The importers mm -hmm. will be able to have enough. Their, their cash flow will bring in more products. Mm. The impact of that VAT and views is not the incident of impact is not on me. Uh, it's on yeah. the last consumer. Mm. Because we pass the cost across. Eventually. Yes. Eventually. That is why the that's price has gone to 10 million, 10,000 yeah. yeah. per 12.5 kg. In some other areas, there are 12,000. Mm. They pass the cost. <laughs> because they pass <laughs> the cost. Hey. No, 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 no. We have that. What do you have? Right. So Something that's not sufficient. Why do you take out? <laughs> I want to warm my food now. If I use microwave, that's it. You can judge the school. You can judge me. If I use gas, they say it's 10,000. We can go in the food court. If you cook, if you, if you, right if you cook beans of this size, hey. then you use about 850 naira to cook it. That's price package, about 1 kg to cook beans. And what is the value of the beans you are cooking? I'm not even cooking beans again. Yeah, beans, <laughs> one plate is 4-5. Nah, it's really dry. Just put it under the stomach, it's dry. So <laughs> the, 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 the most important thing is that, yes, um, there, are most, there must be improvements. Things must change. And that is why we are all crying mm -hmm. out to governments. And government mm -hmm. is the yeah, only one that can save Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Let's see what they government can Government should stop acting like they're helpless, though. Since they know they can do import waiver as they did for certain products, fertilizers and that, make life easy for the yeah. common man. You know what I mean? So, you know, so, you know, sometimes, eh, sometimes we need to listen to ourselves. Like, yeah. every single day we sit here, government should do this one, this one, that one. You see, That's I hear different. you, they are, we are right, too. <laughs> but... How overwhelmed are they really? They, do, they, do they even have the capacity to One do this? Time. Asking? Yeah, like, no, there's so many that that's 360 things. We're talking about time. safety right yeah. now. Pick. Building collapse, insecurity, kidnapping, everything is there. They need to like the the job the that crown. you can do. Education, they're there. Healthcare, they're there. Yeah. Yeah. I think a job that you can do and do it. Don't carry yeah. the yeah. 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 it's, 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 it's all about planning. Yeah, pick it's a job. It's all about planning. They call it project management. Tom Adegoa says, Dangote is Nigeria's government. Nigerian government is Dangote. Lola Imos Adegbola says, the majority will soon go back to the use of kerosene because gas is untouchable again. No. Um, Vincent Godwin said, mm, Dangote to come on board. When will that happen? <laughs> Mui Waige says, the problem is we are relying on international models that is not working in our locality. Mm. Mm. says, cooking gas is liquefied natural gas. Crude oil has association gas when it is explored and drilled. What is the joint venture companies <laughs> such as Shell, Exxon, Chevron, they all have a hand in this, what are they doing? Um... Olagidi okay. Okay. Olagidi says Dangote see they find money. He no day for charity. Mm -hmm. Frederick Chinyere says it's clear some people still benefit from the way Nigeria is. By the time the consequences of all this begin to manifest heavily, English will be hard to speak. Adesi O says we should stop depending on foreigners, but to provide for ourselves. Uh, we are buying our own gas out here. Andrew says you were silent. Okay, no, not talking to them. Um, okay. Lotus says we have to wrap okay. up. Uh, yeah, they, okay. Yes, finally. Yes. Solution. Yes. We are appealing to federal government of Nigeria mm -hmm. to come to the aid of this industry. Declare emergency in cooking gas so that you can feel it for Nigeria. Emergency. Let's in let's let's drop charges. Let's encourage importation for now. It's not going to be forever. 
and let's also watch the market. Thank you. Thank On you. that note, the we are we're speaking with the national president of the Nigerian Association on liquefied petroleum gas market, Mr. Ola Dakpo. So thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. That is all we can take on the show today. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.